Why have you conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, that you have given him bread and a sword, and have inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait as it is this day? So Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who among all your servants is that faithful as David, who is the king's son-in-law, who goes your bidding and is honorable in all your house? Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Far be it from me. Let not the king impute anything to your servant or to any in the house of my father. For your servant knew nothing of all this, little or much. And the king said, Surely die, Ahimelech, you and all your father's house. Then the king said to the guards who stood about him, Turn and kill the priests of the Lord, because the hand also is with David, and because they knew when he fled and did not tell it to me. But the servants of the king would not lift their hands to strike the priests of the Lord. And the king said to Doeg, You turn and kill the priests. So Dobek the Yeromite turned and struck the priest and killed on that day eighty-five men who, were, who wore a linen ephod. Also Nob, the city of the priest, he struck with the edge of the sword both men and women, children and nursing infants, oxen, donkeys and sheep with the edge of the sword. Now one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitab, named Abiathar escaped and fled after David. <clears throat> and Abiathar told David that Saul had killed the Lord's priests. So David said to Abiathar, I knew that day when Dobek the Edomite was there that he would surely tell Saul, I've caused the death of all the persons of your father's house. Stay with me. Do not fear, for he who seeks my life seeks your life but with me shall be safe. Amen. Once David was forced to flee from King Saul A new series of events unfold that train David from God to David in order to establish him as he is a servant of God and he's doing all the wills of God God wants to prepare him to do the will of God you know to do the will of God it was expedient for David to learn to be led by the Holy Spirit as he fled without the, the counsel of the Holy Spirit he went to Ahimelech by himself without any help from anyone he went to Ahimelech, asked him to eat. Ahimelech gave him the five, gave him the uh, bread of the presence, uh, a violation of the word of God, but not an abomination. And David even lied to him. He's, even though he's not led by the Holy Spirit, he's going to fall in an occasional sins. He lied to him that he, uh, that he is going on a mission from uh, um, King Saul, and he got the armor of uh, of Goliath, and he asked for Ahimelech, he asked Ahimelech to pray for him. And again, without the counsel of the Holy Spirit, he went to find refuge to Ahash the king of Gath 
the Philistine. There he's in danger uh, for his life because they informed the king of Gath that this is the person whom they were singing that he um, slaughtered thousands f from the Philistines and when and David then in uh, hypocrisy he pretended madness he started salivating and drooling over his beard and the king of the king of, of Philistines pushed him aside and then he took his parents without direct without counsel from the Lord he took his parents he said let my parents come to you And now in the Jewish tradition, Moabites killed his parents once, once he left them there. This is according to the tradition. Now, when he found refuge to um, to the caves of Abdala, everybody who was owing money to the king was a tax evader, found refuge to David, and then there was a team that was formed. Uh, initially, 400 people that followed David, and now God comes to lead him. And then he received a message. A prophet of God sent him a message to return back to Judah, back to your area. We would say he was, God put him at the mouth, at the reach of Saul's hands. And David now is learning to submit to the voice of God and he goes back to Judah and he found himself in the forest of Hereth and something's gonna happen now it's completely irrational unexpected but the message today is nothing is happening unless God prophesies in unless God reveals it, unless God is given a commandment. Saul, who is completely irrational, when he saw that David has fleed and he has escaped from his hands and with the help of his daughter, and Saul now is exceedingly angry. He's complaining to his own people that Jonathan has helped him. What do you hope to receive from uh, David? Why have you conspired against me? Why do you not love me or feel pity toward me? Then somebody appears. And then somebody who was not an Israelite Doeg, an Edomite, he, uh, he describes what ha transpired in Nob with the uh, priest of Ahimelech. Ahimelech helped and prayed for David. He inquired the Lord for David. He gave him food. He gave him also the, the sword of Goliath to David. And Saul so not a completely irrational and a madman he brought Ahimelech and all the priests that were dwelling in a knob 
was a city dwelling for priests, 85 in, in total. All of them went together. I would dare to say they will probably enjoy going to the invitation, uh, respond to the invitation of the King Saul, not knowing what was the what was the question about. Ahimelech was surprised. I know nothing. I served him. I served him whom I'm serving for years, your son-in-law, who is faithful to you, honorable in your house. And I always prayed for him. And I repeat, in complete irrational and madness, King Saul gives a commandment to m murder all the priests. He asks for his soldiers to to execute his commandment. And now the, his guards, out of fear of God, because this is a great violation, they don't lay their arms to and the priest of God. Then he ordered the Dovak, the Eromite. And that man, he does something the unbelievable, dreadful, but nothing happens unless God has commanded this ahead of time. And Dovak murdered, murdered all the uh, priests and all the inhabitants, women, children, all the animals, sheep, donkeys, he wipes out the whole city of Nob. Tremendous disaster, the city of Nob and the judgment of God. Together, brethren, Let's go to 1 Samuel together. Something that God had told Samuel when he was still young. In chapter 3, 1 Samuel, verse 11. 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 11. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do something in Israel which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. I'm going to do something um, shocking. In that day I will perform against Eli all they have spoken and concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told them that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and he did not restrain them. And therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice of or offering forever. Eli did something dreadful in the eyes of God. It was exceedingly dreadful that his children They offended the people of God. They sinned against the people. They were stealing and they were committing adultery. And Eli learned of those things. He didn't repent of them, nor did he restrain them. He let them free. Don't do those things but he didn't restrain them as he was supposed to and as God wanted them to. So the decision of God is the absolute disaster of the household of Eli. And all the priests, he allowed them to return, to repent. God gave him a chance. The same sin was committed by David. He committed adultery. He killed Uriah. 
but he repented. And God forgave David with consequences. Eli did something very serious. God revealed that to him with prophetic words. But God said those things to Samuel, and Samuel said those things to Eli. And Eli did not repent. He did not return, did not seek God. And so God is going to execute his judgment with whom? With Saul, a man who is a rebel, somebody who is an apostate, apostate actually, and a demonized person. Nothing happens in the life of a Christian. The only one who is able to stop the judgment of God, of the work of God, is man himself. Whether it's a result of sin, to manage, uh, to reach for the mercy of God, to humble himself before God, in order for his repentance to be acceptable before God, because unless he comes before God to say, I am priest, do you know who I am? You don't know who I am. What did David David said, I'm pitiful and wretched. Have mercy upon me, Lord, upon your great mercies, the mercy of your mercy. Don't remove from me your mercy. And God forgave him. And Eli, with absolute knowledge, he was a priest. Without a trace, received, received the word of God, as it was the word of God. despite the fact that he heard the Word of God. God does whatever he wants to. Remember, brethren, remember Job. Job <clears throat> was a person who was uh, refusing to do any evil, and he, God allows for him to lose everything, his children except for his wife. He lost everything, his belongings. Why, though? Because he had to. He had to understand. He had to understand. And there was a problem in his heart that neither he had understood. Only God knows the heart of man. And God had to remove that. His self-justification was indeed a man who was perfect before God. That was Job. And he had to repent in order to to find salvation and to be blessed. When he came to himself and he repented, God God said about Job He said all in all humanity God said Job was one of those three that can be saved by their own righteousness. Whatever God has said, he's gonna do it. Whatever we've done in our lives, we're gonna have a retribution. If I've done good things, then I'm going to have a blessing. If it's, if it's sinfulness, I'm going to have affliction. This is certain. God rewards or attributes to everyone according to their actions. God in patience with grace in case a human being comes to repentance. When they don't, the judgment of the Lord is certain and immediate and imminent. Today, God is calling us to repent. 
and it is expedient and because there may have been an event that may have done we have not understood the size of our sin or the consequences of our sin that's it's expedient to go to God and be led by the Holy Spirit Lord reveal to me please my mistakes the fear of God is one is what gives wisdom to man with fear of God like guilty we're gonna walk before God non superficiality nor with with uh, confidence but with fear of God I'm gonna walk and the one who fears God is gonna find mercy from God knowing then knowing that God is a rewarder to the ones who seek him God gives freedom to those who seek him God he's given us today a day he's granting us through his grace a day because we are to be blamed for many things I'm not saying this I'm saying this for everybody and myself we are to be blamed for many things today if you're hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit don't harden your heart says the Holy Spirit why should you leave your bones in the wilderness instead of coming rich to the kingdom of God God wants all people to come to repentance and to be saved he wants all of us to go richly to the kingdom of God he's asking us today do you want to God said something to Ahimelech he, he gave him extra time for him to repent once Ahimelech fled and went to David how humble was David and let us seek the, uh, the heart of a humble person tremble the word of God and fearing God because then God will be favorable to us and then we'll enjoy the favor of God David said, it is my fault. Stay with me. And it will be safe. Stay with me, do not fear. And you will be safe. But neither Abiathar escaped. He wasn't murdered. But Solomon rejected him from being a high priest because he didn't remain with David all the way to the end. He remained with David when um, Absalom rebelled against his dad, his father. But he didn't remain with him when Adonijah sought the kingdom. The word of God says something. The word of God says something that impressed me when I read this again. Solomon said to Abiathar, You are worthy of death because you didn't. You didn't follow David when you followed Adonai. But I'm not going to kill you today because you bore the Ark of Covenant before my father David and because you suffered with him. But Solomon rejected the author from being a high priest. His priestly ministry it was completed not because they they sinned but because they did not repent
Now, Ahimelech was from the tree, the genealogical tree of Eli, and that's why the judgment came to them, not because their, their grandparents uh, sinned, but the judgment of God came to them because He gave them time to repent, and, but they, with absolute conviction, holy person of God I am in the right all the family of Eli was destroyed because they didn't repent in, in time because dear brethren our time is near the Lord is coming everything is fit is completing <coughs> and there are Dead ends everywhere, social, economic, national ones, environmental ones. There are dead ends everywhere we're looking. And as it was given, what God had prophesied, and nothing happened unless God has prophesied. Once was given the commandment of the of nation of Israel to be formed and we're coming drawing near to the end what matters is if what you but even uh, I separately my wife separately my children separately every one of my brethren separately do I seek and search from the Lord to reveal to me my mistakes to repent and return to God to ask for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse from all my sins I have not medicine which is the blood of Christ I have the doctor the Lord Jesus Christ the Lord who had died for my sins <clears throat> let me not lose my chance the Lord is coming quickly. Don't lose your chin. Today, I repeat, is an acceptable day. Today is a day of salvation. Today, if you hear the, the voice of the Holy Spirit, don't harden your heart. But go to God with a contrite heart, but not with an arrogant spirit. Go before God. And all of us, let us repent and let us say. <clears throat> not like. Don't say like a Pharisee. I mean, I a good, a good person. But say like. Like the um, publican say, the tax collector say, Have mercy upon me, the sinner of God. That's the one who went justified away from, from the temple back to his house. Amen.